Time for some science news on the programme. And this week does start with something of a bright note for environmentalists. After more than a decade of talks, countries around the world have agreed to a deal on the preservation of the oceans. Now, the agreement enshrines the idea that the so-called high seas, which do represent about 60% of the oceans, belonged to all humanity. To discuss, Shirley Sitvon joins me here in the studio. Hello, Shirley. Hello, Nadja. Um, Tell us then what it is environmentalists are hoping to protect. Well, they're hoping to protect a huge part of our planet. Let's look at the map because you can say figures more than 60%, but when you see the actual map, well, it gives you the idea. Uh, the high seas represent more than 60%, about two thirds of the oceans. And everything that's blue, basically, that's more than half of uh, the planet's surface. So protecting it is obviously crucial. Uh, so why is this so important? Well, there's so many uh, marine substance in, substances, biodiversity uh, in those waters. We don't even know what's in there yet. We're only starting to understand what's in there. And it will be used for various uh, elements. It will be used for medicine, uh, for pharmaceuticals, for chemical research. Also, well, there's uh, biogenetics and also cosmetics. Uh, that's uh, one one part of the reasons why the ocean and the high seas are so important, but also they mitigate, they limit climate change because the ocean absorbs uh, carbon dioxide massively. It also, uh, its ecosystems create the oxygen we breathe. So it's important on so many levels for our future, for humanity, for people's health, et cetera, et cetera. It may well be very important, Shirley, but how does this new agreement protect such a huge swathe of territory? It's going to be complicated. Mm. In theory, it transforms what's today the wild west of the high seas into a, a legal society. It gives a legal framework, uh, general ideas. For example, there'll be uh, marine protected areas. And when countries will want to uh, begin some activities in the high sea, well, they will have to explain, to study, uh, to carry out uh, various assessments on the environmental impact of the activities they want to begin in the ocean. So it's extremely, uh, it's supposed to be protective of uh, the high seas, but of course it needs to be put in place. Why is it so important? Well, also because there's a general goal that by 2030, 30% uh, 30 of the planet will be preserved. And obviously this is a, a big part of that plan. And certainly it's a, it sounds like a lovely initiative, doesn't it? Confirming that the high seas, the majority of the oceans belong to all of us. But for environmentalists, there's still one major question here, which is to see what means countries will actually put in place to implement the rules. That's the whole question. Uh, yeah. Today at the UN, not today, this weekend in the UN, we heard that uh, the ship has arrived uh, to port, but the question is what's on that ship and how it will be unloaded so people can actually enjoy uh, what's in that agreement. Uh, there is a, a, a principle that's in this deal, which is, as you've said, sharing everything that's in the ocean because the high seas belong to everyone, all the nations, and many nations don't have the means, don't have uh, the finances to go and research so far into the ocean, but they are still entitled to everything that is being found there. Not only uh, knowledge for future science, medicine, etc., everything we've mentioned before, but also the money that will be uh, made out of this research. It needs to be shared by all humans because it belongs to all of humanity. Uh, that's where the beginning of the implementation of this plan starts and everything uh, that's in it will be determined now because the goals are stated, but it's it's words. Uh, NGOs say that we have to move from words to actions and that's what's going to happen in years to come. Shelley Sitbon, thanks very much indeed.